Um, but to the heart of your question, I mean, yes, we've, it, it's the whole issue of housing and property is a big issue on our agenda. There's a lot of discussion in APRA about the risk. There's a lot of discussion uh, at the Council of Financial Regulators with Treasury and the RBA and ASIC about the risks. We've, we've never hidden behind the fact that we are in an environment of heightened risk. Um, you know, prices are high, uh, household debt is high, interest rates are at historical sure. lows, income growth is low, competitive pressure is strong in sure. the housing market. So everyone needs to be fairly careful okay. about how they operate. Just a couple more problem. questions, because I do want to go to household debt very briefly, but in respect of uh, the issue of the property market being overheated, particularly in Sydney, I think I'm sitting next to a Tasmanian senator where the median price is I don't know, three fifty, four hundred thousand. Uh, South Australia, a bit over, about the same, bit over that. Yep. About a third of the median price in in Sydney. Do you think there is a case for a regulatory framework or regulatory approach that takes into account the very different property markets around the country? Uh, for instance, in in various capital cities between Sydney and Adelaide, for instance, Sydney and Hobart, uh, Melbourne uh, and and Adelaide and Melbourne and Hobart, and also in country areas where the price of property is much, much less. So uh, two, I'll repeat two comments that I made before, before you arrived, Senator. The first is um, uh, there is, of course, an initiative in the budget that to make our power to do that, to have some sense of geographic um, differential in the way that we apply the prudential framework uh, explicit in the Banking Act. So, um, so that power is certainly there, and if we felt the need to use it to be able to um, to be able to do so. But coming back to what we've tried to do, we have tried very hard to focus on lending standards. And lending standards, good lending standards apply where the house prices are going up, down or sideways. Um, Take into account geographical considerations. Take into account geographical considerations. Well, yes, but um, you know, house prices in Perth are falling at present. That's what all statistics sure. show. So, um, High LVR lending, one could argue, is just as risky in Perth as it is in uh, Sydney or one of the eastern coast cities at present. Um, sure. So our focus has been good, good lending standards, banks taking into account conditions and the borrower's circumstances okay. and making sound can lending I, decisions. Can I just go to the final, final yep. uh, issue? I'm sorry, Senator Gallagher, that's taken a bit longer. Um, household, the issue of household debt, I asked questions of this of John phrase of the Secretary of the Treasury yesterday, our household debt to GDP ratio, uh, first quarter of 2016, the figures I have in front of me, was the second highest in the world, just behind Switzerland to the second decimal point. Uh, and due to a revision in household debt for the second quarter of 2016, our household debt to GDP ratio has fallen to 123%, still incredibly high. Uh, aggregate debt in the private non-financial sector worldwide is 140% of GDP, but in Australia it's at 197%. Uh, and that uh, the AMP NATSIM uh, survey says that uh, household debt has quadrupled since 1988, rising from 60,000 to 240,000 after inflation. Are these? Uh, do you consider that there is a, a point at which household the, the ratio of household debt to GDP ratio uh, becomes problematic in this country? Because when I asked Mr. Fraser that yesterday, he wouldn't be drawn on a figure. Do you have a figure? He's a, he's a wise man then. Well, um, because I'm not it, suggesting you're foolish by giving a figure. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, so I, what so, I would... So there must be some point when, when APRA would be concerned about the, well, the household debt to GDP ratio. We, we would say it's one of our you know, higher risk factors at present. So, so at um, what point? Is it but, 200%? But the issue is that it, it, it sort of depends on what else is happening in the system. So. It is, it is high, yes, and that is a concern in and of itself. Um, when you put the other things around it, including the fact that uh, income growth is relatively low, mm. so it's a very different thing to have a high level of debt but high income growth because you can kind of grow your way sure. out of the debt. We don't have that at present, so it's okay, a so given level of debt is of higher concern now than it so might my, otherwise okay. be. So at what point does it become, in your view, do the, uh, d does the amber light or even the, the alarm bills uh, go off? It's at, uh, if it's at, say, 123% for household debt to GB D GDP ratio, uh, would you be concerned with 140%? Um, we, we already think it's high, and 
are responding because it's one of the factors Should it that, be lower? Think that, that leads to concern. Sorry, uh, it, it, it would be more comfortable if it was lower, yes. Exactly how you achieve that, that's a very so, good question. So when do the alarm bells go off for you? At 140%, 150%, what level? Uh, I could, again, I couldn't tell you the figure. It's the combination You must have some figure. There must be some that leads you that to you conclude the, the the metric that we watch most most um, uh, the one that we focus on is the uh, household debt to income level. And um, what's it now? What is that level? Uh, so it's about one hundred and seventy something percent. Okay. One hundred eighty. So when did when did the alarm bells go off for you? Two hundred. So it ran up. It ran up. No, I'd say they're they're going off softly. <laughs> That's why we've been intervening in the sense that... Could, could I ask you if 